Welcome back everyone. Today I wanted to talk about Horacy, and this is a topic I've talked about a couple times on this channel, but I find it super interesting. So it's likely something that I will come back to over and over again, uh, just as I'm teaching myself more about it, because there is a lot to know, although there aren't a ton of people working on it. So this is a very short paper, or really a note, that has come out of uh, Slovakia, and it came out in 2021 about new pseudoscorpions found phoretically attached to other insects. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, Horacy is a type of commensal relationship in which one animal is writing another. And it is done, uh, you know, we think it's done primarily for dispersal, but there seems to be both intentional and accidental Horacy. So the host in this case is not injured really in any way, but the animal that's writing it, the forant, is benefiting for uh, dispersal purposes. And these purposes can be um, that they need to escape predation or, or they benefit by going to an uncolonized area in which they will have kind of free reign. But there seems to be, um, like I said, both purposeful dispersal via phoresis, and then there seems to be quite a bit of accidental dispersal. So some of these animals that benefit from uh, phoresis will be predators and they'll accidentally attack something that's too big and that in this case an insect will fly off and carry their predator with them the predator eventually falls off in some distant area and it benefits by being the only predator of their type in that niche in that area or something like that and then there's just very accidental phoresis in which something like a mite or a spider or a beetle or something like that will be embedded in like the fur of a mammal or the feathers of a bird or something like that. And then that mammal or bird travels miles and miles and miles. Eventually the spe the uh, ferrant falls off and now it has the benefits of being in a new place. In this picture here, what you see is a bumblebee with these little spots on it. And these spots are actually mites. And what we do know about phoresis, a lot of it comes from the study of mites. There are many mites which are specifically evolved for phoresis. These are more of the intentional phoretic uh, specimens where they will actually have a life stage in their development where they are specifically adapted to the attachment to insect hosts and things or bird hosts, things like that. Uh, and they can use that host to disperse. The same thing occurs with snails and slugs. Uh, where they are specifically adapted for dispersal via waterfowl, so like ducks and geese and things like that. But it is, uh, a, or at least it seems to be, a very common thing in nature that we just don't know very much about. So going back to this paper, this is uh, a paper specifically about pseudoscorpions. And for those of you who are not familiar with pseudoscorpions, they are tiny arachnids, uh, you know, related to actual scorpions, and they kind of look like actual scorpions with these little petty pelts, and uh, only they don't have a tail. And they are found all over the world. There's uh, three or four thousand different species of them. They are found in all sorts of environments, so frequently under tree bark or in topsoil, debris, uh, on rock faces, all sorts of things. They're extremely common. They tend to be very small. So if you aren't actually looking for them, you might not find them. But anyone who has ever collected soil insects or anything like that, you will have definitely seen these uh, coming out of your Berlazi funnels or anything like that. They're, they're pretty common. So in this paper from Slovakia, what they were looking at are phoretic pseudoscorpions. And so these will be generally pseudoscorpions that are attached to flying insects. And in this case, how do you trap for those? You use a malaise trap. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with malaise traps, they are great. They are the ultimate lazy man's insect traps. Basically, you have a series of screened panels here, uh, one large one in the middle, and then you have uh, uh, perpendicular screen panels on the side, and they act as a tent, and insects fly into this and then get funneled up here where they drop into a chamber that you have set up with either cyanide or alcohol or propylene glycol or what have you, and it kills the insects. So you can get flying insects really easily doing this. Instead of you know running around with a net, you just set up this malaise trap, 
leave it out there for a couple days or weeks or what have you, um, and they the insects will basically come to you. It's really nice. So what these uh, researchers found while they were collecting these insects were a lot of pseudoscorpions attached to very large insects. And this may be one of those unintentional uh, phoresis uh, events where may, did the, the question is like, does the pseudoscorpion know that it's attached to a flying insect or did it, uh, you know, see a little wormy looking thing that happened to be a moth leg, an octuid leg, and go to predate on it, attached to it, and then the moth takes off. So it's it's kind of a question of how, you know, how autonomous is this pseudoscorpion in this relationship? But the pseudoscorpions will attach themselves to much larger insects that are capable of flying long distances. They found them specifically on moths, flies, and beetles, but they found it repeatedly. I think they said that there were four different uh, groups of pseudoscorpions that they were finding on these insects. And I will link, this is an open access paper, so I'll link to it. But you can see, one's here, I think there's one right there. Uh, they are definitely attached to these little guys really, really well. They they grip on with their petty palps. And it's not just much, much larger insects. For instance, you have this fly here. Really, they're, these this uh, pseudoscorpion is almost the same size. It'll be lighter, obviously, but this guy, this I would almost guarantee was probably a failed predation, but uh, or at least in my mind it is, because it's like, oh, look at that juicy morsel. But uh, even this fly, because you're talking about relatively light things, can move this pseudoscorpion long distances. So it's really neat. There's not a ton uh, known about pseudoscorpion phoresis, but it is just one of those uh, cool interactions in nature that you don't really think about very much. Uh, and that these in, these insects and arthropods and uh, arachnids and things like that that you don't think would be able to travel very far can take advantage of their environment in order to get really long distances really fast. Uh, so I'll link everything in the description and I'll talk to you guys later.